Hi guys and welcome to Fez Air Software today and we're unboxing this Double Bell BY012 Black or AK74 variant. So a quick note on safety, if I'm unboxing, shooting down range, doing disassemblies, I always make sure I'm nice and safe. So I've always got eye protection on just in case something happens. Make sure mags are out and empty, and obviously unless I'm doing the shooting. Obviously that's used in chrono, and make sure that there's no mag ammunition left in anything as well. So make sure you're doing the same. Hi guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy this content today, please do like and subscribe because you're really helping me out. Uh, and if you haven't done, joined my Discord, please do so. I'll put a link down below. A great bunch of guys on there. Come and have a chat with us all. So today from our recent Taiwan gun unboxing from uh, the end of 2020, I'll put a link down below. Uh, we've got this Double Bell uh, AK variant. And we're going to do an unboxing. I've had quite a lot of interest in this about people asking what it's like, what's in there, the quality of it, that kind of thing. So I'm quite excited to unbox this for you. So this thing is about £105. So I paid about £105 for it based on the um, exchange rate at the time and everything uh, from Taiwan Gun, which I'll put a link to the product on their page down below. So um, we're looking at steel uh, outers for the cover, the safety, the trigger guard, the mag catch and sights. And then metal alloy uh, is reported for other parts. A little bit of plastic in the stock and the handguard. Uh, and it's got a 450 round uh, high cap in there as well. So we'll get to it and we'll get looking through. So we've got just a plain brown box, nothing too special, just with a tick on the front telling me it's an SLR 107012. A uh, little bit of a warning on the back, not much else, nothing overly interesting. So we'll get in and get this open and gone quite uh, sort of basic internal there's nothing wrong with that as long as it kept secure now, it was originally tie wrapped down they've obviously done that because i've had this um unboxed uh, as uh, and downgraded as part of the purchase so here's my uh, sheet from taiwan gun so they've got it down to the same uh, 338 to, uh, fps or there thereabouts uh, which is absolutely perfect i'm happy with that that's perfectly great for uk um purposes Obviously, we're limited to 350 FPS. Now, in terms of the brand itself, uh, I'd not heard of Double Bell before, but um, there's a lot of rumours and people saying it's actually D-Boys uh, and Boye and Kalash have basically rebranded and brought themselves out. This is telling me it's got 7mm bearing uh, and a metal hob up chamber, which we'll have a look through. A little bit of a manual, just generally about it. Uh, mixed English and Chinese. A little bit of a diagram. Uh, a few different variants and things in there and how to use it. It's actually quite a, a nice, uh, quite a nice manual. I've then also got wrapped up in bubble wrap, a waffle style mag. I do quite like that. I like the little bit more modern looks. I'll put that to one side. So that's supposedly 450 rounds. There doesn't appear to be a cleaning rod. There's no battery, there's no charger, which I know I always say generally that I'm not going to use the battery and charger that's in the box uh, and I don't and I won't but I know a lot of people do uh, want them and use them which is why obviously as part of the video um, I usually show the battery uh, for rate of fire but with this one it doesn't come with one so when we do the uh, shooting footage it will be 7.4 and 11.1 only so getting to it then straight away now it feels weighty that there's there's a fair bit of heft considering that I know that it's metal, majority metal. There is, you know, a good few kilograms in there of weight. It feels really nice and solid to hold. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, that is, you know, quite a nice looking replica. I'm quite impressed with it. So to start at the front then, you've got metal um, muzzle brake there, which is um, pinned in. So if you hold down the pin, you're just going to have to retract it and that will unscrew in a traditional screw, I think that's like a, I'm sure it's about a 22 mil um, thread underneath or, or thereabouts. Um, in this one, there is a little grub screw right there underneath. If you undo that little grub screw, you will need a tiny little torx or a tiny little uh, hex head uh, tool. This will come off and there is a 14 mil negative underneath here for you to attach. Let's um, see if I can, uh... oh yeah. The grub screw is obviously not on very tight. So I am unscrewing that, and there is your 14 mil negative thread hiding quite happily under there. I'll 
tighten that back down, put that back on. Can be a little bit tricky to hold that little pin in place, but uh, it's just the way it is, isn't it? There we go. So you then got these ribbed uh, hand guards in there. Um, they're not entirely to my liking. They feel a little bit, I suppose with grubs on, uh, grubs, gloves on, you'll not feel a sort of ribbing that much, but it'll mean it's easier to hold. You know, my hands aren't going anywhere when they're on there. Now there is a little bit of play, a little bit of movement in there, which is not entirely unexpected. And particularly because I can release the top cover and the front handguard or the upper handguard rather can come out of place. You know, it's not to say unexpected that there's a little bit of play in there, um, but it's just something to watch out for. It's definitely not affecting the use of the gun. Um, I'm potentially going to change these anyway. So moving that back then, you've got a rather solid feeling um, metal body and what is supposedly a steel top cover as well and it's spring loaded so when you press the button it is springing up out of the way which obviously removes uh, the need for the uh, uh, the pin out of the way for the upper handguard. Now it did say on the manual that it was a metal hop unit now that is definitely not uh, the hop was set a little bit then I assume that's from uh, Taiwan gun doing their messing that is definitely most definitely I flip it over so you can see that is most definitely a clear plastic hop unit now i've seen these before in in sort of like the the old old budget seamer stuff and they tend to not be amazing but we'll see how that goes you know we'll we'll, we'll give it the benefit of the doubt now i have seen something that's really really surprising to me here that i don't know if you can tell about there that's actually a quick change spring system so this gearbox has got a quick change spring system that's actually pretty impressive um wow i'm quite impressed with that the other thing I've noticed is the battery compartment does run all the way down into the front handguard as well, which is quite nice, which means you can get an extremely long battery going all the way down, not just the little short ones that sit here, but you can get a long one. Uh, and we'll look at batteries after the shooting stuff. So you've got your usual mini Tamiya. The wiring looks like the standard usual type, nothing overly special, nothing really, no, unusual there. Uh, you've got the button that lifts up, uh, pushes forward, oh no. Oh yeah, it pushes forward and it even pushes partially the uh, top cover of the gearbox there. I hope I've got that properly, I'm leaning over slightly. Um, so you've got your push button there, lock that back down. You've got your side mount on there to put a side mount on. Now, unfortunately, I don't know where my side mount's gone at the minute to try it out, but it looks like it should quite happily take any usual standard, typical Airsoft AK side mount. You've got a really solid, uh, nice, chunky pistol grip at the bottom there uh, with your motor inside. The selector is like a textured pattern, which is quite nice. It's uh, it's quite nice to, to grip. It does seem to be gripping well. So it does sort of sit into place quite nicely. And it does look like it's the kind that I like that's got a cover. Oh no, it's let me down slightly. So that was a cover that just seems to have been glued on possibly over the top of that. That's not a problem. I just need my needle nose when I'm doing that. Then we come to the back where we've got the stock that's really solid, tiny little bit, tiny little bit of play in there, but nothing worrying, nothing that isn't usual for an AK. Locks, oh, I was gonna say it locks into place really solidly, but it actually comes out. Well, it does come out, so you might want to be careful of that, watch out for that, uh, but I can swing it round drop it into place and it is solid when it's in there. It's definitely not coming out of that hinge when it's like that. So we'll move now to seeing the footage. We'll uh, do the rate of fire tests and we'll do the uh, range tests as well and see where that leaves us. Just the hop. 
naughty and a little bit of hot. A little bit too much, but just over four ticks. So back from the uh, chrono shooting test then, so with a 7.4 volt battery we're getting around 12 rounds per second. Now that's not, excuse me, that's not terrible, that's not unusual, that's usually the kind of thing that we would get with uh, some of the SEMA budget and with the 11.1 uh, we're getting 18 to 21 rounds per second. Now to be honest that's pretty fairly standard so I would say that the, the internals are on par potentially with SEMA in terms of you know, the rate of fire and everything, the electrics that are in there. Um, the range then, the range I was really impressed. Um, I was easily putting out over 45 metres, um, really sort of consistently well out there, and it just seemed to be bedding in better and better and better as I was putting more rounds through it. Now, obviously, I don't know if it's a tight bar or whatever, there was a tiny bit of group in it at the end of the range, but I was actually really happy with how, how well that was shooting. Uh, I have got some um, sort of external bits and pieces that I'm going to do to this to sort of modernise it a little bit in a, a, a future video. So come back and check that out. But I am really impressed. For £105, I wasn't expecting an awful lot, especially considering how, how good SEMA AKs are in general. I didn't expect that this would sort of get close to it, but the build quality is really nice. Uh, the hangar's a little bit wobbly, a little bit sort of meh, whatever. Not mega happy that the stock doesn't look in place, but I'm going to be honest, um, this is going to have an AR style stock on it, buffer tube and, and, and stock on it. It's going to have sort of like a rizzed handguard and what have you. So I'm not overly fussed that much about the handguards anyway. But it's a solid little piece of kit. At £105, of course, it's not going to be high end makes, you know, your KWAs, your Crytax and things like that. But for £105, you've got a, a rather spiffing little uh, sidearm there that your know, side piece there that you can run and know it's a backup throw it in your boot when you go in airsoft and know that you can turn to it uh, as part of the shooting test as well we did use its own mag which fit and, fit and fed lovely and was really nice and solid in there he says there we go nice and solid in there a little bit of side to side wobble but that's the kind of thing you get from a, an ak anyway um we also used a sema um, traditional AK-47 mag as well that was out of my uh, CM-028 uh, that we've got to do some work on later uh, and that fit and fed lovely as well a little bit snugger fit than the included double bell wall one but I was worried would it fit would it feed and it fed absolutely lovely I was really really happy with it as well so for £105 absolute steel uh, performing really nice really good range rate of fire I always say could be a little bit better um, you know, people often want much faster than the real one can shoot sort of thing, which is fine if that's what the kind of thing you want. Uh, but knowing that it's sort of 12 rounds per second on a 7.4 and 18 to 21 on an 11.1, it's pretty good out of the box. I'll grab some batteries. We'll see how those fit now. So I've got two sort of batteries with it in a minute. I've got the traditional 7.4 that we use for the chrono in uh, and rate of fire test. And I've got this uh, 7.4 um, eight field one as well. Now... Don't expect that this one will fit, but we'll see what happens. Uh, so I'm just going to put that down. It definitely doesn't fit that way. What I could do, though, is I could slide. So just to show you, what I did there was I slid the battery all the way down inside the handguard. And then they had the other cell at this end here, like this. The wiring, bizarrely, will actually sit on top. It's a little bit fiddly and it's uh, it's not going to be the easy to get the connectors sorted and connected up but you could you could get that battery in the top of the gun there without too much hassle or trouble or messing about now if that one fit then this one will definitely fit so this is a little 1200 that will go all the way down in there i will put a link to this particular battery that's got the dimensions on it uh, on the uh, on the page for it as well but that fits all the way down in there Meaning, in theory, if eight fields do a longer, higher capacity one, 
this is going to be a great idea for a battery to drop into there. Equally, I could just leave it plugged in anyway and it'll sit quite nice at the front there inside the top cover, um, which I'll show you. Nice and easily gone in there and still leaves the charging handle accessible for you to adjust the hop there. Nice and easy, really looking uh, good and I'm impressed. So next time come back where we're gonna do the internal review. Uh, I will leave the usual photos after this. Uh, so please do make sure to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.